Morning. <laughs> oh, welcome back to this morning again. We hate to say it, but if you can only hear the breaks, if you can only hear the breaks. Uh, right, it's time now to speak with the lovely Martin Lewis. He is live in Manchester ahead of his show this evening. Good morning, Martin Lewis. What we got coming up tonight? Morning. Well, good morning to you both. Yeah, it's the big one for my show. It's our pre-Christmas special, the Black Friday special. For those who've watched the show uh, in previous Christmas specials, it's the festive forecaster where I run through all my predictions of the deals and discounts that are going to be coming up this Black Friday where you can save the most amount of money. That's at 8 o'clock. I've also got how to make free cash in time for Christmas, the best place to save for your children because those are always big issues coming up this Christmas. This is the big one. Do not miss it at 8 o'clock tonight. Lots and lots going on. Sounds lots good. going on. And in fact, there are rumours buzzing around the studio... Rumours, rumours, rumours. ..that you are going to be singing. Is it true? Well, there has become a Christmas tradition. Two years ago, I did Greatest Showman at the start. Last year, it was Be My Guest. Uh -huh. And I am contemplating doing something tonight, but if I tell you what it is, I have my... my Producer Claire over there is, is quite vicious and I may end, up, may end up with lacerations. So I cannot tell you what I'll be doing, but those rumours may have a, 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 a soupçon of truth in them. Oh. Yes. oh! I'm looking forward to that. Yes, excellent. I Can't am looking forward to, to it. But listen, Martin, as we know, that show is always unmissable. The Martin Lewis Money Show is on tonight on ITV1 and ITVX at 8pm. Do not miss it. I keep forgetting it's Black Friday. I know. You get ready for I do love bargains. a deal on that. I'm I know. Like, get ready for your He'll have it all. Uh, um, we've got a lot of people involved. We, we do. Today? We've got lots of people getting in touch and they need your help, Martin. So let's get straight to it. I've got the first one here and it's from Kevin. And he says, can we claim any benefits yep. for our grandson? We have a special guardianship order for our grandson as we both still work and are too young to retire. We don't get any help with nursery fees, which are currently £850 a month. That's what? so expensive, childcare. Oh, Less than 20% uh, child tax credits. The only benefit we get is child allowance. We have asked social services to help, but they've said there's nothing for us. Is there anything we can claim? We have a decent wage of £3,700 a month in total net wages. Oh, well, there's a lot in there. The first mm. thing I'd suggest you do is I'd go to someone like Citizens Advice or a local advice centre and get them to do a full benefits checkup with you. There are tools online, uh, Entitle2 has one, where you can do a benefits calculator just to see if there's anything you're missing out on. Uh, I'm not quite sure which type of tax credit you're getting, but it may also be worth looking at, but it can conflict with some types of tax credit. With uh, There's a thing called tax-free childcare. It isn't really tax-free childcare, that's the name of it. Now, this is... if if you are a single parent and you're working or you're in a couple as you are and you're both working and you earn less than £100,000, then you can effectively get the state to put some money towards your childcare. So for every 80p you save in tax-free childcare, the state will add 20p on top, up to you saving £8,000 a year and the state adding £2,000 a year. And there are hundreds of thousands of families missing out on tax-free childcare, which could help to pay your nursery fees, though it may conflict with your tax credits. That's what I don't want to say that because I'm not quite sure which tax credit it was. So... Um, you need to check both of those things out. So what I'd be doing is I'd be making an appointment at a benefits advisor. That, you know, you need to go. There's so many different details in that. It's not something I can answer from the, what you, the information you've given me, especially if you're in a special guardianship, which for those who don't know, it's... Uh, it's sort of like when you don't want to do adoption, but you're becoming the guardians for an, for an under 18 year old and you effectively have all the rights of parents in that sense. So you should be eligible for tax free childcare. You should be eligible for um, uh, to get uh, many of the children's payments out there, but they're means tested. So those are my two things. Benefit and look up tax-free childcare to see if you're eligible for it. OK, a bit of research, yeah. essentially. Hope that's helped you out, Kevin. Thank uh, you. Next up, Martin, we've got Sam. Sam's got in touch, said, how can I invest my inheritance? I'm going to be inheriting £100,000 from our late parents' estate. I currently live with my 17-year-old daughter in our house, which is mortgage-free, with a 50-50 split with my ex-partner to be sold when our daughter turns 18 next year. The 100000 will not be enough to buy the other half of my house from my ex, but I am currently in receipt of universal credit and aware that I will need to invest the money wisely to offset the lack of benefits I will no longer be able to claim. Could you recommend my best options? The money will eventually be used towards a new home along with the sale of the current home. That's a tough one as well. Mm. So, um, 
The first thing I'd say is if you're planning to buy a new home relatively soon, you probably want to be looking at saving, not investing. Investing is where you hope your money will grow more quickly, but there's a chance that you could lose some that you put in. Over the longer term, it tends to outperform savings, and you should talk to an independent financial advisor about that. I don't cover investing. But in terms of saving, if you're going to be buying a house in two or three years, you don't want to take risks with that money that you would have to cash it in at a point when it was on a low because they move up and down. Then you want to be looking at... Well, first of all, for your daughter who's 17, once she's 18, I'd put some money in a lifetime ISA so that when she buys her first property, that would help. But for you, you want to be looking at something that pays monthly income, I would think, because you're not going to have those universal credits, so you're going to need to supplement it. So you want uh, an account where you get interest monthly. Top paying easy access account today is Metro Bank at 5.22%. Metro is also top as a one-year fix at 5.9%. You'll want some money in cash ISAs just in case you're going to pay tax on it. I presume you're getting universal credit and working, so you are a taxpayer. It, you, you didn't quite give me that information, so I'm not sure. So for the moment in the short term, have a look at those two accounts. The top fixed rates, they do change by the hour, so it could be different by the time that you get round to it. Be maximising your interest in the top savings account that you can but keep the money liquid, keep the money in savings if you're going to want to buy that house within the next couple of years. If your idea of buying a house for yourself is maybe 5, 10, 15 years away, then you might want to look at getting some independent financial advice to look at how to invest it. Thanks, Martin. Excellent, excellent. I've got one here from Rebecca, and we both kind of looked at each other and went, ooh, this I want is... to know that, yeah. Yes, because I've actually got some of these. I've it not. says, Rebecca, are premium bonds worth considering? I have some spare money to invest. Are premium bonds worth considering? For some people, yes. Oh. It's quite complicated. OK, the premium bond prize rate is 4.65%, which, as you'll hear, is less than the top savings accounts that I have just mentioned. But actually, if you have typical luck, which is based on the median average, I won't bother explaining that, but some will remember their school maths and know the difference between the median, the mean and the, mean and the mode. Based on the median average, you will earn less than 4.65%. Think about it this way. For every person who wins a million quid, yeah. quite a lot of people have to win nothing, which is why, on average, with typical luck, you get less than 4.65%. So who are premium bonds good for? Well, first of all, if you're going to pay tax on savings interest because you more earn as a basic rate taxpayer more than £1,000 interest a year, which you're allowed to do tax-free, as a higher 50% rate taxpayer more than £500 interest a year, then they become better. Premium bonds also, you're more likely to win near the the prize fund rate, the more you've got. The maximum is £50,000. So as a general rule of thumb, if you are a higher or top rate taxpayer and you have enough savings that you pay interest on it and you're looking at putting a large amount in, 30, 40, 50,000 pounds, they can be a pretty good bet. If you're looking at putting a few hundred quid in and you don't pay tax on your savings, you would be a lot better off in normal savings where you're guaranteed to get the interest. That is a a big simplification and summary of like the full guides I write on whether this is worth it or not, because it's actually more complicated than you think, because yeah. premium bonds are all about whether you win the prize. So we're looking at uh, multinomial probability to decide if it's right or wrong for you. And Martin, can I just quickly ask, with yeah. premium bonds... Not often words you hear on ITV, multinomial no. probability. I love a mean mode of median, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, Martin, when it comes to premium bonds, say, for instance, you put in £100 or £200, whatever it is that you, you're going to put in, whether you win or not, you can always withdraw the exact same amount of money out that you've put in. Is that correct? That is correct. Your capital is safe. It's a savings account where the interest is dictated by a lottery. But if you talk about, I said Metro Bank before, which happens to be today's top easy access account that pays 5.22%. So you're guaranteed to get 5.22% in Metro Bank. You're not guaranteed to get 4.65%. Now, if you put 100 quid in with typical luck and the median, if we, if we do it, shall we do the median? Imagine I've got 10 people in a row. Camera around, Steve can follow me. Oh, here we go. Live TV, ladies and gentlemen. Right. So one, two, what the, what the median is, the median is how much the person, if you line them up in order of how much they won, how much the person in the middle would win, right? Now, if you have people who've got £100 in premium bonds, the person in the middle would win nothing because a lot of them are, with a small amount have to win nothing and one might get £25 or 50 quid. That's why I say the more you've got in, the better off you are. But yes, you can take your money out, but you can take your money out of any easy access account. And the big thing with premium bond used to be it was with NSNI, which is state owned, so it's 100% safe. But in all UK regulated savings accounts, you're now protected up to £85,000 
by the state's financial services compensation scheme, and you can only put 50 grand in premium bonds anyway. So there isn't a safety dividend, so you have to work it out on whether it'll pay more. And that, if you look at that on a typical luck assessment, it really is the big benefit is you don't pay tax. A lot of people don't pay tax on savings anyway, so it's only for those who do pay tax on savings with higher amounts that gets you near the averages where it'll work for you. Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, I love it he'd, when he starts jumping about. He'd be great at charades, wouldn't what he? What a name. Imagine him on Boxing Day. I'd want to be on his team. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. <laughs> Martin, Thanks, thank Martin. you so much, mate. Good luck with the show tonight on at eight. We'll be watching. <laughs> Look, it's a film. It's a TV show. What time's it on? How many fingers? No, it's not on a four. Times that by two. Five words, it was. There we go. There we go. Uh, <laughs> the Martin Lewis Money Show, eight o'clock. <laughs> He's having a lovely time. He's jumping about. To cut him off. <laughs> cut him off. <laughs> Where they at? He knows numbers, but I wouldn't he want him on my does. team now on Boxing Day. He does, he does. <laughs> I love oh him. my God. Uh, right, enjoy.